I recently recorded some violin parts for the new adaptation of Blythe Spirit, which is out in the cinemas in May 2020. Shameless plug. Uh, now I've done the session, some of the sessions in this room. I've done them in other studios with other producers for the film. Now there've been a lot of different mics involved. Now I've also recorded my string parts to my own tune, which I'm going to talk about here. Um, now I've got three microphones set up here. I've got a AKG C414, C3000 and an SE3300. Why have I got three mics? Well, I've done a lot of parts, 12 in all. So there are four harmony parts, each of which I've recorded three times. So exactly the same thing three times, and then move on to the next harmony and so on until I've completed my tracks. These three mics impart very different sounds onto the, the violin. So I've just set up so that the every mic that I've got here can easily see the violin, as it were, and then just recorded and then just done the same thing again, same thing again, etc. Now, if you were to record with one mic only and I stayed in exactly the same place, you are risking phasing issues between those three of the same part. So that's why these mics are spaced out slightly so that if I stand still, I'm getting a completely different sound from each mic different distances, different orientations, which means that I'm far less likely to get those problems. Indeed, on modern digital audio workstations, we have correlation meters, which allow you to see whether everything is in phase or not. Very useful. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play you what I've done, and you can see or hear the difference between all of these mics. Here I am then sat at my computer, and you can see on the screen there are green and blue parts there. The green part is the piano part and then the blue part is all the violin parts I've put in. So I've put in 12 things and if you look on the uh, the screen you can see violin 1 C3000, violin 1 C4 and 4, violin 1 SE3300 etc all the way down to the bottom. So there are 12 parts there. Here they are. Now I shot myself in the foot a little bit because this tune has no click track at all so I'm having to sort of record blind. So I actually recorded each part without listening to any other parts. So it, at the, the bottom part, the 12th part, I recorded that with all the other, other 11 having been recorded but they were all muted. Just so I could really concentrate on that piano part. Now at the moment they're all going through a bus. Uh, if we open up the mixing desk here, uh, these are the violin parts here, which are actually feeding, instead of the stereo output, they're feeding bus three, which then appears as a channel here. And I've got the Space Designer reverb, which is very lovely indeed. If I just take the Space Designer away, um, now the channel equalization, what I've done is I've taken off all the bass end there, because these mics pick up loads and loads and loads of bass. and don't need it and it can really destroy your mix if you've got a lot of extraneous bass sort of rumbling hanging about. So I've filtered that off. I've also taken some of the top end away and just put a little bit of body in there just to capture the full string sound. So uh, if I just take away the uh, the reverb <laughs> And there we go. So there are the, the strings with no reverb on at all. I quite like them dry. It depends on the track. So if I just play the piano back again. Maybe halving that reverb, I did a little plug-in uh, demonstration. If I take the reverb down, perhaps, just take it down 6 dB um, and have a little listen to that. That 
that's a little bit better. I can hear a bit more clarity on those strings. Now, I pressed go at bar 126 or whatever it is. If I just take the piano away now and play from the very beginning, there are some noises there which I don't want. So this is something that I would do on every session that I, that I do, is to find the beginning point. There we go. So that's pretty much the beginning there. And then just cut slightly before the parts. There we go. And I'll just go back to my main sort of zoom level here. Just get rid of all of those. And then put a fade at the beginning of each one because you don't want the sudden sort of noise to begin because then it's obvious that the string parts are coming in. Now I know that um, it might not be an issue for a single part but when you've got 12 here it could be a one, could be an issue. There we go. Okay, and then let's listen at the other end. Now, it depends on how clean they are at the other end in terms of me pressing stop. It's not bad. That's okay. Um, there is a little bit of an abrupt stop there, but what I'll do is I'll cut to where I've got to. There we go. Delete all of those, and then do the same thing with the, uh, the fade. Just select all the tracks and do the same fade on all of them. Now, if I just solo out, for example, I'm just going to pan them all. I, I pan the, the parts ever so slightly in each part just to give it a sense of space. The reverb, if you're sort of putting a stereo reverb on something that's mono and, and a lot of parts, you can still tell that it's sort of a mono sound that's being treated. So if I just play back the um, C3000 on its own, And then the C414. And then the SE3300. They are three completely different noises, and I don't dislike or favour any of them over anyone, any, anything else, really. I think the 414 is quite a lot more refined as a mic than the other two. But I like what the other two give it. So if I just uh, have those three parts together. There's quite a lot going on there. Three different mics really do impart those different sounds. Now, of course, the timing is all the, you know, is the essence of the, the entire thing. And as I said before, I shot myself in the foot a little bit with doing this to free time, but usually the chords tend to sort of weld into uh, to one another. Now, there are a few little niggly frequencies hanging around. It could be that I, because when I record, I always have one ear slightly off so that I can hear the violin acoustically. I can connect with the instrument uh, rather than going through electronics. And sometimes if your headphone is like that, it can actually, the mics can actually pick up um, extraneous noises or bits of the backing track. But the backing track is still there, so I'm not going to worry too much about it. Now, I did a second take where there were parts um, where there were rests. I 
I'm not going to worry too much about cutting that because there were no noises apart from bits of the backing track. And actually, if you do cut a lot of things out, it can suddenly um, sound a little bit disjointed. If there's spill, microphone spill, it's a bit like trying to isolate drums. If you just switch the snare drum mic off when the snare's not playing there'll be a sort of a hole in your mix uh, because there's no mic listening to the ambience of the snare anymore. A bit like that, really. So I've got to do a bit of a clean-up here. Now, this one was a little bit more noisy at the start. So I've got to do that. I've got to cut that out at the end. Now, the very end of the piece... It's fairly clean at the end, but I've just got to make sure there aren't any little bits and pieces. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm just going to have a little look here. Yeah, there's just that little sound there. So I'll just get the scissors. I'm actually going to cut slightly after the cursor there because I want to maintain a little fade there. Get rid of all those. Select everything there. Get the fade tool. Just do something like that. And there we go, nice and clean. And I'll do the same to the start as well. So you find, uh, find the start. You can keep the scale up if you like. Okay, so let's do the same again. This is so, so worth doing because you end up with a bit of a mess otherwise, where you give somebody, you give them violin parts to somebody and they're thinking, what's that, all those noises that I can hear in the background or why is it not working properly? Or So it is, it's a, it's a good, gets you a good reputation as a recording artist if you give people clean stuff. Because that can really, you know, it just saves a lot of people a lot of time. And there we are, there's my violin recordings for you.